Some games are way too easy, and some are the exact opposite. Let's talk about the latter today. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 missions we had to reload the save like 27 times. Starting off at number 10, it's Half-Life's Zen. For a ton of people out there, this is where the playthrough ends. Like, don't get me wrong, the original Half-Life is a great game, but the ending section in the alien world of Zen just isn't up to the standard of the rest of the game sets. There's a lot of problems with this place, like the environment's ugly and empty, there's not a lot of enemies, and the platforming is brutal. And unfortunately, the focus, that's kind of the worst part about it. If all you had to do was make a few jumps, Zen probably wouldn't be that big of a deal, but you have to throw in the floaty air control, combined with awkward jump stuff, and it's really easy to just freak out every time you're in the air. Sometimes you'll make a jump, sometimes you won't, and it'll feel like you basically had no control over the eventual outcome. Anyone who actually bothers to play through this part is going to be saving and reloading constantly, because if you don't, you're going to lose your mind. It's unavoidable. Now, I am a little more forgiving of this place than a few others. I don't completely hate it, but the last section of this game is pretty sloppy. It's kind of that dangerous combination of frustration and boring that makes you screw up jumps more than you would normally. It's just rough all around. At number 9 is Jack 2's tank mission. Honestly, my least favorite mission from Jack 2. Uh, it's close to the very beginning. It's the part where you gotta run through the factory or whatever and that security tank follows you. The camera angle's really weird and it's hard to judge how far the gaps are. I, I, I hate that level, no matter how many times I've played through that game. For what amounts to a kid's game, Jack 2 is pretty hardcore. The game doesn't mess around at all, and when it wants to be hard, it is, and it wants to be hard often. What makes this whole tank sequence so tough is that the entire chase is done from the tank's perspective, and that makes it really difficult to judge how far all the jumps actually are. For whatever reason, Jack 2 really loves the tight jumps. Like, it feels like nearly every jump in the game requires near perfection if you want to avoid dying, and this sequence is no different except for the camera is not helpful. So you have to pull off a series of pin-perfect jumps while being chased by a tank from a weird distant camera angle, and if you screw it up, it's back to the start. Later missions do get nastier, but this mission is really early, and it's such a difficulty spike that it really stands out. And number 8 is Modern Warfare 2's Snatch and Grab. The main campaign can be tough, but the Spec Ops mode is where Modern Warfare 2 really stops messing around. Snatch and Grab is the 15th Spec Ops mission where your goal is relatively simple. Grab the intel, get to the extraction point. The problem is that the area is swarming with soldiers and juggernauts with very little cover to speak of, so poking your head out, even for a second, can mean death. That's really all it boils down to, getting from point A to point B, but pulling it off, it is no, it's no easy feat, especially on veteran. There's so many enemies that spawn that it's basically pointless to fight them all. Your best option is to just counterintuitively chuck flashbangs and hope you blinded enough guys you'll survive long enough to run by them. The juggernauts are a huge problem too. They spawn randomly and sometimes they'll just appear directly behind you. If that happens, you're dead. There's pretty much nothing you can do to prevent them from killing you. That's that. It's a meat grinder, pure and simple. A few of the final Spec Ops missions are even worse, but they're basically jokes that tell you to fight juggernauts with a knife or something stupid like that. Well, this mission is at least supposed to be possible. At least I assume it is. And number 7 is Mortal Kombat 9's Mission 269. At a certain point, the challenge tower in Mortal Kombat just gets stupid. There are some just ridiculously unfair missions in the upper parts of the tower. Anything where you have to fight Goro along with someone else, I mean, that's just a pain, but this one specific mission is where Netherrealm really went way too far. The challenge reads like a joke. Striker versus not one, not two, but three Shao Kahn's with only one life bar. One Shao Kahn's obviously bad enough. He's the boss of the game and is intentionally unfair. He's one of the most infuriating fighting game bosses out there with all the lame tricks we've come to expect from broken boss characters like him. And this mission asks you to fight him three times in a row with the same health bar using Striker. If it if it were Mortal Kombat 3, it really would be a joke, but at least in Mortal Kombat 9, Striker is better. With all of his gun attacks, it's at least possible to play Keep Away for a while. They'll get you eventually, though, like they always do. You'd think they'd tap out at two Shao Kahn's, but they threw in that third one just
almost for some laughs and ended up making one of the most frustrating fighting game missions ever. The sad thing is there's probably missions that are worse. This one's just the most obviously unfair, so it stands out quite a bit more. And number six is Alone in the Dark, the 59th Street Chase. Obviously, we're talking about the 2008 game, and we recently gave it a little bit of credit because it has a pretty great level select system, which basically works like selecting chapters in a movie. It's a feature we'd actually like to see more of these cinematic type games implement. Now, that's all well and good, but the problem is that a lot of the levels in this game are, are uh, terrible, especially this one. What's supposed to be a really epic car chase set piece is actually one of the most frustrating sections of the entire game. Game. Firstly, the car controls like it is on ice at all times. Secondly, the timing that is required to survive is incredibly tight, and depending on how you're playing the game, it, it might actually be literally impossible to finish. Now this is anecdotal, but when I tried to finish this stage on the Xbox 360 back in the day, the level literally couldn't load fast enough to keep up, so I was slamming into invisible objects and even falling through the world half the time because the game was being read off of the disc. Installed. It's actually playable, but it's not any more entertaining. It's still a bizarrely difficult driving sequence that's both one of the first things you ever do in the game and the first time you ever drive a car. It is just a mess. And if you want to get through it normally, you have to replay this section potentially dozens of times, even when it is working properly. It's a frustrating introduction of one of the most ambitious but janky games of its generation. And number five is Spyro 2, Trouble with the Trolley. Eh? This one's really specific. If you've played Spyro 2, you know exactly what we're talking about. In Breeze Harbor, there's a guy who wants you to pick up 50 gears using a trolley, all without hitting a single object. It sounds simple, right? Well, it's not. This challenge is brutal as all hell and requires absolute perfection if you want to do it correctly. The Spyro games are usually pretty easy going too, but once in a while they have these crazy difficulty spikes that are really hard to forget, and this mission is absolutely one of those. It's basically just rude. It forces you to keep track of a lot. You gotta jump, breathe fire, switch lanes, get everything, and one mistake will just force you to redo the whole thing. Oh yeah, but first you have to listen to this guy say, trouble with the trolley, eh? Which gets old, like fast. Trouble with the trolley, eh? Trouble with the trolley, eh? It's one of those kinds of missions that's easy to try over and over again, because it seems like it should be easier, but it isn't. And number four is F-Zero GX's Story Mode Chapter 7. A fantastic game, uh, but that level made me want to punt babies. F-Zero GX is an unrelenting, fast racing game that is a pretty challenging story mode that, that inexplicably becomes F-U hard out of nowhere in Chapter 7. There's not a lot to talk about with this one outside of its difficulty. You're racing this guy called Black Shadow who, let me remind you, is normally only a pretty average racer, but he's suddenly the fastest thing alive and you have no chance of keeping up. It's just a really hard race, and that's it. F-Zero has the unique feature of letting you adjust your machine's stats before a race, so unless you know how to tune your ride properly, you basically make this race literally impossible for yourself unless you know how you're supposed to set that. All you have to do is get first place, but it just never happens. It feels like something should change at some point, like you're learning the competition, but it, it feels like dumb luck eventually, whether you manage to win or not. Even if you race near perfectly, you can and you will lose, so you're just relying on the rare moments where your opponent it screws up and you have to take advantage of it and guess what they almost never do and number three is the meat circus from psychonauts in addition to cruel jumping puzzles a vicious escort mission damage based insta kills that eat your dream fluffs faster than you can extricate yourself uh, there's also a boss that requires some crazy good timing and the entire premise of the level which is a circus made out of raw meat is uh, disturbing it's another brutal platforming challenge in another game that really isn't brutal very often. Psychonauts is a really fun, mostly fair game for the most 
part, but when you get to the final level, that friendliness just goes right out the window. This place is messed up in more ways than one. For one, like I said, it's a circus that is made of meat. It's it's kind of gross, honestly. The primary challenge occurs on the big top, where they combine platforming with an escort mission, which is as annoying as it sounds. Your charge races ahead of you and starts getting attacked by enemies. That basically works as a countdown, so you have to race to their position, defend them before they croak, which, you know, wouldn't be so bad if there weren't a bunch of dangerous platforming between you and that. That's really the thing that makes this section so over-the-top difficult. Uh, they expect you to pull all these crazy jumps while the camera is going nuts in the middle of a countdown. It's stressful as all hell, and if you fail, you lose, so you have to rush. That leads to mistakes, and that leads leads to endless frustration. Double Fine eventually did a patch to make it a little more tolerable, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It's just not as brutal as back when the game first came out. At number 2 is Halo 2's Gravemind on Legendary. We've talked about Cortana from Halo 3 pretty extensively, so let's talk about the other really hard level from the Halo franchise. Uh, now what makes this stand out is the start. You begin the mission with no weapons whatsoever in the middle of a big open room, and just getting through this part on Legendary is going to take multiple reloads. And while the start's probably the biggest difficulty spike, the rest is no slouch. You just die so fast in Halo 2, and combine that with the unforgiving checkpoints, and and that makes this one of the most difficult stages to get through the entire series. It's generally a pretty tough campaign, too, in Halo 2, but this level in particular stands out as the one where you die a hell of a lot. And finally, at number one, Mafia, the race mission called Fair Play. On the surface, the original Mafia game looks like an open world action game like Grand Theft Auto, but it's really kind of a weird hardcore simulation style game, both in its shooting and the driving. The recent remaster retains that difficulty, especially if you play it on classic mode. And as someone who's put a lot of time into both versions, I can tell you right now, the remaster does not let up at all. If anything, it may actually be harder than the original now, at least when it comes to that big car race mission. The whole thing starts with you picking up a car from the racetrack. You're supposed to race it to a mechanic who sabotages the car, then drive it back. This is all before the actual race, and it's hard as hell, too. The timing is ridiculously tight, and if you damage the car at all, the mission has failed. If you somehow manage to get through that, the actual race starts, and it's absolutely ridiculous. The car itself steers like a dumpster on wheels, and pulling off a decent turn is nearly impossible. It doesn't help that the race is partially scripted, so so it makes it difficult to tell how you're actually doing until the final lap. Maybe you're big into racing games and you got through this section no problem, but for everyone else, this whole section is just pain. Pure pain in every possible way. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon the Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks. Right here on